I don't sit around going, wow, I've had an awesome life, you know? Canada's darling Shania Twain has had a long, storied career. Since her debut in 1993, she has released six studio albums and according to the Canadian Hall of Fame, sold over 85 million records. As of 2024, Shania is still active, having just wrapped her Queen of Me tour and a Las Vegas residency underway. So in this Much Vault episode, we're celebrating the queen of country pop. Let's go back to 2004, where she sits down to chat about her first greatest hits album and her never changing love for writing songs. Greatest Hits Records, they always, there's so much more, I think, than just a collection of fan favorites and some of your favorites. For some people, it's like the end of something, the <laughs> beginning of something, it's a pause. Yeah. Is there any grandiose statement you're making here? No, I'm not really making a statement in that sense. I mean, there's something personally probably changing. Uh, the timing of it is more just, it's time, I think, because we're already we're squa you know, squashing on, squishing on as many uh, singles as we can. And, you know, how long do you wait? And then, you, then, you know, you, then you have a really hard time choosing what goes on. So I think the timing is right in that sense. Um, we just, we have enough material to, to put out a proper greatest hits album. Um, and for me personally, I kind of feel like I can, I just, I, I, because it's a time of reflection. Mm. And it does make you look back and say, wow, look at everything that's happened in these last 10 years and all the music that, that we've made and um, everything that's happened uh, because of these songs. And uh, it's just been a really powerful decade for me. So it, for me, it's a reflection. And it also gives me a little bit of space to say, or I guess liberty would be a better word. Right now I feel like I'm able to say, okay, I don't know what style of music my next record is going to be or what direction it's going to take on. I don't know when it's going to be mm. released or when we're going to do it. I don't know when my next tour is going to be. Uh, I don't know anything like that. And it feels really nice not have to know. Normally I'm planning so far in advance all the time. Um, because the succession of the last three records has been pretty much just straight ahead. You know, the cycle of writing, producing, you know, writing, recording, producing, uh, promotion, Tour. touring. And this cycle um, has carried on for me for the last 10 years. So I kind of feel like now the cycle, it doesn't need to continue like that. I, let me just see. Mm what comes next, it doesn't have to be planned right now. And that, that feels kind of nice. So essentially, this is a pause. It's kind of a pause. It's a pause to reflect, and a pause to just write with no actual purpose in mind. Mm. So I'm just gonna write. I'm not gonna think about the direction of the record. Uh, I'm not gonna think, is it gonna be country? Is it gonna be pop? What's it gonna be? I don't know. And these are questions that you've always gotten from the outside. Right, more than anything. Right. And I think, I just think that now, um, the pressure is off with, you know, style, timing. You know, I think I've been versatile enough up to this point that I'm not really sure if it matters what the style is the next time around. I think, I, I think I've opened enough doors for myself that I have a lot of choice right now. I feel I have more choice than I've ever had. And it's actually, yeah, it's not country rock, it's Shania Twain music. It is, and, and a lot of people say that, you know, well, that's a real Shania record or, you know, that. And okay, well, what is a Shania record? I don't think anybody really knows. A Shania record is Mutt and Shania collaborating. That's what a Shania Twain record is. And, you know, where it fits after that, I guess is up to the fans, right? Right. And, and I'm, happy, I'm happy with that. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you've ever, maybe you do, I've always gotten the impression that you don't stop to smell the roses. No, not very often, but I'm learning how to do that more now. Um, literally, I mean, you know, I will stop and smell the roses. And I think Asia has helped that a lot. You know, having a child makes you really look close at your priorities. Mm. And, I, you know, I've been married now, I, I guess it's 11 years, I don't know, I think it's 11 years now. And we're still happy and we're still married, we're still in love. I, I, right now I'm just looking and going, wow, I'm just so grateful. Um, 
that this career hasn't beaten me up. I look at a lot of other people and think, wow, you know, look what it did to them. Yeah. I'm, I just feel so lucky. And so I, I can't take anything for granted anymore. And I do have to stop and smell the roses. And I do have to appreciate my family. And, and I also want to spend more time just writing music too. Because you know you can never take that for granted. The songs are everything. Whether I record them or somebody else records them, my deepest and greatest pride is in writing a good song. And it's not a question of fulfilling a contract and certain songs are due at this time. It's just you do it because you want to do it. That's true. Well, when it comes to the writing, um, you can't really can't force that anyway. Yeah. You know. Some artists do though. Some artists feel that pressure to deliver. They do well. I mean, I, I, I feel the pressure to deliver in the sense that it's got to be a hit. And that's more of a personal goal, though. You know, I, I want to write songs that people connect with. Mm. That is my personal goal. There's no doubt about it, as a songwriter. Um, and, I mean, hit's probably not the right word. I want to write a song that, that means something to people. That's what makes it a hit, anyway. There was one, um, one uh, critic, I guess, was saying that, you know, the funny thing about Shania is, as an artist, um, doesn't offer a lot about her world, herself, her introspection. Mm -hmm. She writes a lot for other people. Mm -hmm. Is that a conscious thing? Is it true? It is true, I think. Yeah, yeah it is true because um, uh, people, I mean, people know my personality. That's, I pretty much, I wear that on my sleeve. That, my personality is in my songs. There's no doubt about it. That's, you know, when you see me in concert, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the same person. Um, so in that sense, people know me very well. But yeah, as far as being more introspective, um, more serious about singing about my emotions, I think that's just too personal. Maybe I'm just, I don't think I'm comfortable with that. And on top of it, I wouldn't want to get up and do a concert of that kind of music. You know, uh, it's, I don't think I'd find it satisfying. Hmm. I think it would be boring anyway to people. Why do they want to hear, you know, <laughs> why would they want to hear me sing about my deepest, darkest pains or whatever? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I like to move on anyway. And I'm not one, it's not even my nature to wallow in my, uh, in sadness or emotions or anything like that. I move on. Is that why you said that uh, being a star isn't in your personality? Because inevitably there's trappings. The world revolves around you. Mm -hmm. And you sort of lose perspective when you were that big star. You can, yes. Is, is it difficult to maintain that down-to-earthness despite all the action and activity well, it's around not, you? Well, it's not for me because I just, I don't live it. I, I, I leave it whenever I get the chance. I forget about me, the performer, every chance I get. I literally just am not that person unless I'm that person for that moment. But Is it easy to step in and out? Because today you're doing a lot of press. Yeah. You have to be that person when the day is done. Do you just, is it hard to Well, I mean, it's not gears? like I'm being a different person to right. forget, right? So, I mean, I'm just, I'm, this is me. This is, I'm just being myself. But um, stepping in and out of uh, the role um, is not meaning that you're changing personalities doesn't mean you're just, so it's, it's easy. When you're at home, you're not the star, you're the mother, the wife, and the friend. It's just a role that changes, absolutely. You know, that's, the, you, you just said it, it's exactly that. When I'm at home, uh, we're not talking about me, the singer. And I mean, nobody really cares about any of that. Image means nothing and no, you know, we're not talking about the same things. I'm cooking dinner or, you know, giving Asia a bath or whatever. I mean, I'm doing those things. So. And everyone's roles change throughout the day or throughout the course of time, whatever, depending on whatever your profession is. So, yeah, this is me, the professional, I guess you could say. I mean, yeah. Um, and I go in and out of that pretty easily. And whenever I'm not um, on camera or I'm not on stage, I am just hmm. wife, mom, sister, friend, whatever. Um, the figure of 80 million, you don't really pay attention to it, you've said you don't, but is there tangible <clears throat> sort of moments where that number does mean something? Because it's so huge and it's hard to put in perspective. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there anything that puts it in perspective for you? 
Because I mean, you try and turn that off. I don't think about it. I really don't think about it. And it doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't affect anything. Um, no, I mean, it doesn't... It, 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 okay, it's great, because obviously it's something that's been accomplished. It's something that's great and not easy to accomplish. Mm -hmm. You're aware of that, then? Yeah, I'm aware okay. that it's that it's... You know, those are phenomenal numbers or whatever, but I mean, it doesn't affect me or the way I perceive my career. I would still be doing what I'm doing. I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't do anything differently. Um, and it does feel good. It feels good to have accomplished so much. It's rewarding. Well, 11, 12 years ago, I'm sure that there were um, elements of knowing that you're on this path and knowing that there was a desire to make it, whatever make it is. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you felt like you've made it now, but was there a pivotal moment where you realized all the hard work did pay off and that you have arrived to a moment that you've aspired to be at? I think that right now is the first time I can say that I'm feeling that. Really? But only because, uh, I don't know, there's something, the greatest hits, it's all psychological, I'm sure. But it is a pivotal moment in an artist's career to maybe, have a package okay. like that. So it is. So see, and it is affecting me in that way. It's making me reflect and say, up to this point, all of this has been accomplished. And it makes you feel as if you've, you've, you've made it. No one can take that away from me, and I, mm. and, I, and I like that feeling, you know? I like the feeling of being able to say, and regardless of what the numbers would, would have been, it's not the numbers that make it that. It's just to be able to look back at 10 years of continual success, whatever the accomplishments were, I mean, I couldn't rhyme them off to you, but I mean, just of constant active career. Um, that feels really good, and reflecting on it, I think now, the first time I've really ever been able to reflect on it really, um, makes me think, wow, um, I am at a point now, I'm at a different point. I've, I think I've, I've, I've arrived or something, I, I, I've made it, I don't know, you know. Life is good? Life is good. Life is amazing. <laughs> you know, because what is making it, I don't know. I mean, if I just looked at making it and what I thought making it was when I first started, I made it after my first 100,000 record sales. You know, that was to me making it, wow. Or whatever gold is. I mean, that was, um, yeah. that's, that was amazing. And I would have considered, if someone's, I would have said, I've made it, you know, because I didn't have very high expectations. I was grateful for everything. Mm. I came from nothing. Wow. Just getting a contract, that was making it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So you were always, of course, life is all about setting new goals. And you're lucky if you're, the, if you're a person who's able to set new goals like I've been able to set. It means you're accomplishing them. It means you're moving on. You know? um, you've had biographies, sometimes unauthorized about you. Mm -hmm. Well, they've all been unauthorized, I think. I you think haven't so. done your official no, one yet. No. Um, there's a TV movie in the works. Um, mm -hmm. Is that weird? Do they have to get permission, first of all? No. No, because it's just based on facts that they've read, right? So they can pull the information from anywhere that's already been published. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand that your story is fascinating to so many people? Do you ever th th sit and think, why, why me? Yeah. I Do you my understand life's the fascination? Boring, actually. Yeah. There's nothing really fascinating about me. That's for sure. Um, Do you understand the story though, and why it is so fascinating to people, and why people like to recount it? No. I mean, I understand the rags to riches thing, um, or you know, the Cinderella type thing. I mean, I guess hmm. I don't know. Is that is that is that what you're saying? Is yeah. that what it's it seems like the perfect story. It seems like, you know, I if mean, you, you couldn't write a better script, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 that surprises me even. I mean, I think that's what uh, amazes me sometimes is that my life has changed so much. It's so different from where I started. Um, so, okay, I guess it's an interesting story. I mean, I don't know. You know, I'm, I live so much in the present and the future that it's almost like my life uh, from the beginning is that's it's another lifetime already. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. so far mm -hmm. um, from where I am right now that I just I can't um, I don't carry it with me. I don't carry it with me. I move on. It must be neat to be reminded occasionally, though. 
I mean, no, I mean, I've never lost who I am. I mean, you know, mm. I'm a Canadian. That's in me for good. You know, there's grooves that go that that that, uh, that are there from your youth that stay with you. You know, and I think a lot of my grooves are very deep because of the hardship and stuff that that we endured when we were kids and just uh, all of that. Um, and they stay with you. There's no doubt about that. But to be awed by your own mm. history and life is a little bit weird. You know, I don't sit around going, oh, wow, I've had an awesome life. You know, I, I, I think, that's for other well, what people. an interesting story I have. I mean, I, that's I, for other people to say, though. I guess that's, so. that's See? the funny See? thing. So, you know, when someone asks me, don't you find it interesting? I don't know. I can't be objective, I guess. What was interesting about it? Well, well, one of the odd things for me that I've always thought was kind of odd about your career was the longevity of the records. And we were so used to seeing artists come out with a record. And it, it's considered a hit if it's on the charts for two, three, four weeks. Right. Shania Records, they have this existence of like a year, a year and a half in the upper parts of the charts. Like, what is that a testament to? I don't know. I just don't know. I'm so lucky. I mean, can you believe it? I don't know. Sometimes I can't believe it. I don't really know why. I've been very lucky to have the support that I've had. I mean, I work really hard. Um, Mutt is a huge part of making records sound really unique. It's a big team of people, I think, that, you know, the record company's been, been very dedicated. I think all the elements have been there. All the cards have been in place for me, which doesn't happen for a lot of artists all the time. And what makes that happen? Who knows? Does it come from the artist? Does it come, who does it come from? Um, so that's why I feel really lucky, because I don't know either. Mm. And you know, I, I'm always trying to write music that, I mean, I, I think if there's any one thing that you couldn't have success without is the songs. You can have all of that in place, everything in place, all the money, all the, the support. You can have uh, best looking artist, um, greatest producer, you know, great luck label. And if you don't have the right, you don't have good songs, nobody wants to hear it. So, I think it all begins with that, okay. and then everything else has to fall into place. And, and uh, I, I really do take pride in trying to write music that people can relate to, and that people can relate to on an everyday basis, lyrically and musically. You know, and I try. To, I want. I want people to feel good, because that's what I get out of it, and I want. That's what I'm trying to share. And, and that, that translates live because obviously when I get up on stage and I hear that music pumping, I, I'm, mm. I want to get up there and have a good time and, and, and be that, live that for that hour and a half with everybody. Do you have any theory as to why um, in your leading this pack is Canadian female artists? There's been a history of it that I've always done well internationally, but just lately? It seems it's real, there's this real big emphasis on Canadian females internationally. Not guys, not groups. Any idea? Is it a, just a coincidence? I don't know. I, mean, I think it's been for quite a while. I think we, we, we can stand to focus more on, on female Canadians. Um, I mean, there's a lot of talent there. Uh, so I think it's a good thing. You know, why, why all of a sudden? I, I, don't, I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't know, but um, I mean, and everyone's had such an individual story. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if it's just one stream of, of people or something. Everyone's really, you know, come from such a different place. I, don't know. I think the sad thing is the shattered dreams of all the girls that you would pull up on stage after Avril. Thinking, <laughs> thinking I'm going to make it now. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a great Sorry, thing. Bill, I just want to stop for a second. Funny, isn't it? I yeah. thought that was really funny. You couldn't plan that. Comical. Okay, we're, you're going to dance, we're going to speed <laughs> it up. Ooh, until you see it, it's like, yeah, it works. It's quirky. Like, um, oh boy. Um, yeah, have you had to develop a thick skin over the years? I started off with a, with a thick skin. <laughs> I think that my childhood helped, helped in a big way there, you know. Um, being the kid that goes to school without a lunch, um, going through winter with rubber boots, yeah, you know, all kinds of things, you know, that 
you have to go through when you're a kid that is just scraping to get by it. That toughened me up a lot as a kid and prepared me for, you know, equipped me for, um, you know, for being a fighter and uh, in the music industry. The music industry can be really tough. Well, yeah, you've been witness to other stars being built up and then all of a sudden it's the natural inclination for people, media, whatever, mm -hmm. to tear them down again. Yes. And almost, it's be easy to take it personally when you know you can't. That's right, it's tough, but I, first of all, I don't pay attention much to any of it. I, I let a lot, well, everything roll off my back if it's negative. It doesn't matter, mm. it's irrelevant. It doesn't affect the big picture. And everyone's bound to have opinions, and there, some, some opinions aren't good, they're not positive. So what? It's not going to affect the way I write my next song, mm. right? And you have to look at all the positive things and just and just carry on. So no, no, I mean, you know, you can't please everybody. You really have to accept that. And but you know, I know what you mean. I mean, there are times when you'll see somebody really rise, and then it seems like everybody is is pulling them down. I mean, that happens. Um, I you know I haven't been through that, right? Because. I don't know why. I've been very, very lucky. And now I'm at the point in my career where, you know, I mean, I'm not really a target for that. It's, it's a different thing that happens to people who come out really fast, make it really fast. And if they don't, if they don't keep it up, that's the real hard pressure, you know, then they're, they're going to drag you down. If you make it out of nowhere really big and you can't follow up really big, then you're in trouble. Like if I hadn't been able to, if I hadn't had come on over after the woman and me, maybe that would have, would have happened to me too. Because I mean, the woman and me was out of nowhere. Ten million albums. Or if the first one wasn't of. there, if your first record was, right, come on over. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So that's perfect. But even even the woman and me, ten million albums. That was a lot for female Canadian. wasn't even American. Yeah. And America embraced it. And that was an unprecedented amount of records for a female, for anyone, mm -hmm. uh, with a rock producer. <laughs> I, you know, I, it just, it really was a recipe for disaster. I could have failed so flat on my face after that. And it, it didn't. So, okay, that didn't happen to me, but it does happen to a lot of people. And it's, you know, I mean, I, it's scary. I don't know, I think people have to be very, very careful. You, you're better off to build your career. You've got to build your career. Right. You, you know, You've got to have longevity in you, or else they're gonna beat you up. <laughs> you know, you you you've got to have, because a lot of people they'll write, they'll get all of their best songs in their first album. It took them ten years to write that, but they don't have ten years the next time around. So what are they gonna do? Mm -hmm. Whereas with the woman in me, those songs were literally written just months before the record. So I did the same thing the second time and the next. You know, I've never had years and years of just writing. I mean, I've got lots of material that I've been writing over the years, but I wrote intentionally for that record. You know, for The Woman and Me, those songs were written for that. And then the same thing for Come On Over and the same thing with that. And now, you know, we got off the road, the tour ended. Uh, we wrote three songs, and these songs are, are, are for this greatest hits record. You know, it's not like we wrote these songs six years ago and we've been sitting on them, you know. So if you've got the ability to, to carry on, and your ideas aren't going to dry out, then you have a good chance of sticking around. You know? Did you make yourself laugh when you were writing the, the latest single? The, I always the, the, the spoken word part at the beginning. I can't believe she said that. <laughs> when, Maybe when, it's my mind. I, I think. Know. Whenever, whenever we do stuff, uh, <laughs> lyrics, whatever it is, we, we always get a laugh out of everything. But then we know that it's, it's worth doing. We have to respond. If we don't respond, then nobody else is going to respond. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know down in the comments below your favorite Shania Twain song and share the love for one of Canada's most iconic artists. If you guys haven't already, you know the drill. Hit that like and subscribe button and follow for more. Much love.